He's my Redeemer. Praise God. He is my Lord and Master. Praise God. It is so good to be in the presence of the Lord today. Amen. Whatever you and I need from God, we can get it today. And my hope is, is that if you do need something from God, that you don't leave until you get it. Amen. We're going to be patient with you. You just let some of us know that you need a breakthrough today, that maybe you need the Holy Ghost. There will be people that will stay with you and pray with you every service. Amen. Or even come here during the week with you and pray with you and help you. Amen. Get to where you need to be in God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, I just want to say a couple things regarding our uh, fall festival this last Friday night. I cannot say enough. What a total success. Amen. Give yourselves a hand. Wow. I don't know if we had a better one. I really don't know. It was a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous uh, event. And it was said to me that night that we need to do this every single year. Uh, it's just, we do it, we do it a good job. And uh, I'll tell you what, we had feedback from many, many people. And the feedback was that when they came in to our church building, they said they felt so welcomed and they felt kindness. They felt peace in the house. Amen. And that's what we're looking for. Amen. Giving them a righteous alternative. Praise God. There's no telling what kind of mess they can get into out there. But we know that when they come into the house of God with, with spirit-filled people, they are protected. Amen. They are protected. Praise God. It was definitely a positive thing, an impact that we made in our community. And I do want to take a moment and thank uh, Sister Crystal. Thank Crystal for all of her hard work in making that happen. Give her a hand. I want to thank Brother Dan in helping us as well. Organization, amen, and preparation. Praise God. What a great, great event. And if I have anything to do, it, we'll continue to do it every single year. And can I say, can I say, now, when I, when I was first asked, can they bring the puppies in? I had a, a slight hesitation. Uh, but, you know, who doesn't love puppies? If you don't like puppies, don't raise your hand. I don't even want to know who you are. If you don't like puppies, I don't want to know who you are. I mean, puppies are adorable. And when Kenneth brought his puppies in, and they brought him in that swimming pool. Uh, it was a highlight of the event, I think. I mean, along with that hayride uh, and just everything that went on here, what it was a tremendous, and I don't know if you've seen the feedback on Facebook. People were just raving about it. And uh, again, I can't say enough. Thank you so, so very much for making it happen. Praise God. Maybe next year we'll have many more cars. And uh, I think we had, around just under 300 people uh, here on Friday night. That's pretty amazing. And uh, they were here, they were here 20 minutes early. And uh, they weren't here uh, for those wonderful beef hot dogs, I don't think, but um, uh, we did make more than enough. And I think a lot of us left Friday night saying to ourselves, I don't want to eat another hot dog for a little while. So... Uh, but, but again, thank you for, for making it awesome. Amen. It was a wonderful, wonderful event. Praise God. I also do want to thank Brother Dan for ministering uh, in my absence here at the church when I was gone, seeing that he's just the cutest baby in the entire world. I know I'm partial, uh, but uh, yeah, Brother Dan, uh, he was a very, I, I hear he was a very pretty baby. Um, and uh, that's what got Mickey right away when she saw the, 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 the photos of him as a baby. Uh, I don't know what her and Cindy are working out right now, but they are married, so they can leave happily in bliss as well in that. So isn't it great to be in the house of God? I'll tell you what, church is awesome. Praise God. This is not part of my sermon, but during that wonderful worship service, 
that scripture went through my mind that we got to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. When we make that a priority, I don't know. I mean, Noah does such a great job playing those drums, Rochelle, on the keyboard. That stuff doesn't come just, I know that some people say that comes to some people, you know, just naturally, and that, that could be the case, but, but I guess I'm not speaking for anyone like that. Uh, but I know that if I'm good at anything, it's because I put a lot of effort and work into it, you know? Um, I hear that on this uh, life group, this uh, disc disciples this disc disc group you know i i hear that tyler is the guy to beat and then nolan comes in real close to that Um, i don't know if there's any rivalry there but you know i don't think that that stuff just comes you know just to everyone you know easily you gotta practice you know being a good shot i'm going somewhere with this being a good cook i mean think about all the things maybe you want your job maybe Maybe you figured out your occupation and you're in demand and, and, and you do a great job at whatever you do. That stuff, you got to put, you got to put your thinking and your hard work and your hands and your energy, you got to invest in that stuff. It's no different when it comes to living for God. Amen. It, it's going to be because you and I love him and we, and there's a reason why we're in church every, every, every Sunday, you know, and Wednesday. There's a reason. Because he saved me. God saved me from myself. He saved me from my flesh and my sins. Amen. And he's given me a hope, right? My hope is not in this world. My hope is one day that I'm going to look on him face to face. Praise God. Amen. One day I'm going to be able to rule and reign with him forever and ever and ever. Praise God. That's how beautiful this worked out. That's kind of what I'm going to preach about today. If you have your Bibles, if you turn with me to the book of Acts, Acts chapter, Acts chapter 1. Amen. Praise God. There are pumpkins to purchase. Uh, we had purchased several pumpkins for our displays. And uh, if you're wanting to make some pumpkin pie, uh, if you're wanting to, uh, you know, put a display outside your house, um, Buy some pumpkins. Go to the uh, coffee bar. And uh, I already bought 10, 10 pumpkins this morning. So all those in a row on the black table, do not touch those. Those are mine. They're bought and paid for already. So I'm going to take them home. And, and, uh, and then, you know, we're, we're, we're wanting to sell them all. But if they, if they don't get sold then maybe we'll use them to sight our guns in for deer season. So I don't, that's an option. So buy them all though, buy them all. So uh, we don't have to continue to display them at church. Acts 1, verse 6. And the scripture says, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? They were wondering that all the time, you know. When was the right time? You know, Lord, are you going to here? Are you going to raise up your earthly kingdom? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Verse 8, we use this one a lot. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up. I mean, think about it. He was talking to them and all of a sudden he just began to rise up off the earth. And the Bible says in a cloud received him out of their sight now the next verse i can you all of us would be doing the very same things okay you know i mean it would be like it's amazing right well they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel we are assuming those are angels 
Two angels are standing beside them. And then the angels, we can see here, which also said, Men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up for you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Praise God. Amen. I'd like to uh, preach on this thought today. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. Would you put your Bibles down? Can we pray today? Father, we love you and we thank you. We thank you for the house of God today. We thank you for the body of Christ today. God, we, we are listening to what the Word of God has to say. I pray that you would open up our hearts, open up our minds, help us to be receptive. You are no respecter of persons. It doesn't matter who you are today. God is here for you today. I pray that God, that your work, that God, that you want to do will be done today in Jesus' name. Help me, God, to bring forth the Word of God. And everyone said, in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you shake somebody's hand next to you? Would you fist bump somebody? Amen. If you can't get around, wave at somebody. Let somebody know that you love them. Let somebody know you care about them. Amen. The Christians ought to be the friendliest people on the face of the earth. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So it is so good to be in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Once you've, once you've smiled at one or two people and shaken a hand and waved at somebody, let somebody know you love and appreciate them, you can make your way back to your, to your seat today. Jesus is coming back. Amen. We may not understand everything that is going on in our world right now. I can hardly wrap my mind around everything that is going on in our world we may not know the time or the season of the lord's exact return but jesus is coming back he's coming back for those that are looking for his return amen jesus is coming back amen for those who are living amen the over coming life for him. Jesus is coming back. I don't know what prophetic things are happening right now in our world, but the things that are needing to take place are taking place. And the table is being set for the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What's going on right now with Israel, we can't be assured of Everything that's going to play out before our eyes, but even though we may not know, it could just pass and things could go right back to the way that they used to be, or, or this could be the cursor, right? The precursor to the beginning of the end, right? We know that God's going to begin to put things right where they need to be, and everything is going to fall right into place, uh, and God's people, uh, the people of God, uh, are going to be right where they need to be as well. Can I get an amen? amen? Hallelujah. The signs are in front of us. I know you can drive on Highway 41 going northbound, and when you're going down the highway, uh, Mr. Bergstrom seems to buy out a lot of those billboards and you get to see all the pictures of, uh, you know, Mr. Love or whatever his name is and, and you get to see a lot and then his cars and he's advertising but you know that the prophetic things that are going on in our world uh, are very much like the billboards. They are out there and they are present uh, and you and I can see all the signs of the end times, all the signs of the things that are getting ready amen things that are going to take place the signs are right in front of us the return of our lord is near and they are written on the billboards they are written on the walls for all of us to see matthew chapter 24 and verse 6 and 7 says and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars see that ye be not troubled 
Amen. Those of us that understand what's going to happen in the last days. Amen. Those of us that are, are, are ready and we're right and we're doing what we need to do. Uh, amen. We're not to be troubled. We're supposed to know that things are going to happen. Things are going to take place uh, in preparation for the return of our Savior. But the Bible says wars and rumors of wars. Be not troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers and in many different places. Amen. We are seeing the scripture fulfilled in our day. We are seeing the scriptures fulfilled in this very hour. Amen. I'm looking out and I'm seeing the people of God. Amen. That know the word of God. Amen. We have a relationship with God uh, and these things should amen not be foreign to us they should be something that we understand now it doesn't matter if you're pre-trib mid-trib or you're post-trib the scriptures speak of a great tribulation the wrath of God the day of the Lord that will be poured out upon those that have failed to heed God's warning. Some believers are preacher. They believe that we will be taken out of here prior to any and all tribulation. Then there are the mid-tribs, right? That we will go through a portion of uh, uh, tribulation. And then there are those that are post-trib. They believe that we will go through all of the tribulation. And that is fine. You can study eschatology, the study of end times, and you can know which and what you believe in regards to being pre, mid, or post-trib, but I can tell you this, I, I can tell you this this morning, that if you and I just make up our minds, hear me today, somebody, amen, somebody needs to hear me. God is reaching for somebody here today. If you and I would just make up our mind that we will be ready right now, amen. The Bible says today is the day of salvation, hallelujah, amen. Today, amen, right now is the moment. We don't want to wait till tomorrow. I want to be ready right now. I want to know what the word of God says that I have to do so that one day I can see Jesus, that I can look upon his face and I can live with him forever and ever and ever. Amen. I'm looking for, amen, that day the Bible says uh, the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ uh, shall rise first, but then we uh, which are alive and remain shall be caught up together uh, in the clouds and so shall we ever be uh, with the Lord. Uh, I don't think there's anybody here today uh, that wants to miss the rapture. Uh, I don't think there's anyone here today uh, that, that, that it doesn't want to be ready. Uh, I, I know today uh, that you and I love God. And today is the day to correct whatever it is in your life, in my life. You see, having a relationship with Jesus has got to be my priority. Knowing, knowing, his, knowing the gospel message has got to be a priority living and obedient and overcoming life unto God will, amen, will be an assurance of our salvation, amen, and make it possible, amen, that you and I will see Jesus face to face. Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah, Jesus is coming back. Amen. There is no better time than right now to get closer to Jesus. There is no better time than right now to fall deeply uh, in love with God's word. Uh, amen. Uh, we, 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 we've got to be sure. Uh, the Bible says love not the world, uh, neither the things in the world. Uh, because if the love uh, of the Father, you hear me, if the love uh, of the world isn't, then you don't love God like you need to love God. 
We've got we've to be able to make that determination. We've got to be able to figure it out. We've got to be able to be in tune with the Spirit of God. We've got, hear me right now, in this day and age, it, there has never been a time, uh, no better time than you and I being in tune with His Spirit. Amen. Than you and I reading God's Word and letting God's Word lead us and guide us. Hear me, somebody. Because there is... Sadly, even today, many believers who are well-meaning Christians who will be deceived. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Don't, don't sit up in here and say, there's no way, there's no way I can be deceived. There's no way that I can, that I'm going to miss the rapture. There's no way. Hear me. Go through the New Testament and see all the souls, uh, amen, that were with Jesus. Uh, see the men and the women that literally saw physical miracles with their own eyes. Uh, and where were they? Uh, they all left him. Uh, they forsook him. They walked away. Uh, people say, hey, uh, if I could just see a miracle, uh, I would serve God. Uh, oh, hear me. No, no, no. Uh, deception is real. Uh, and so today, uh, amen, the greatest way, uh, amen, to overcome deception uh, is to make up your mind uh, that you will prioritize uh, your relationship with Jesus there's no better time 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 3 and 4 says the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine <laughs> doesn't say that, you know, that, that they won't listen to it they're just not going to endure it. They, they know it, but, but, but they're not going to continue to receive it. They're going to make a conscious effort that it, it may not be for them, that, that God's not coming back for some time now and so I'm just going to wait for a better time. They're not going to endure it. They're not going to endure sound doctrine, but it says, but after their, what? The lust of their friends? No. After what they, after what they, they heard about what's going on in a, in this, this religious movement or, or that reli no, it says after their what? Their own lusts. Shall they heap to themselves uh, teachers uh, having itching ears? Uh, amen. They, they, they're sick and tired uh, of hearing this, that, or another. Uh, they, they want to do their own thing. Uh, and so that's exactly what happens when you're deceived. Uh, you don't no longer endure sound doctrine. Uh, you make up your mind uh, that you're going to live your life the way that you want to live it uh, and it doesn't matter what your preacher uh, it doesn't matter what your teacher uh, it doesn't matter what the master's saying uh, you're going to you're going to do you're going to live according to your own lusts yes. and you don't want a preacher that's going to make you uncomfortable i've said this before and i'll say it again if you go to church and your preacher never makes you uncomfortable you're in the wrong church and what i'm saying about that is uh, if your preacher amen is just tickling your ears if he's just itching your ears and telling you what you want to hear then you better stand up and you better get out of that church and you better find a church that's going to preach it that's going to preach the word of God the unadulterated word of God and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables Oh, today is the day of salvation the security of our salvation must not wait until tomorrow that's how, hear me, I believe that's how deception begins. You just put it off. I haven't, and then what you open yourself to the enemy. You open yourself to the vices and the devices of the enemy. No, you, 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 you can't give, you get, uh, what, what, what I heard people say it. You, you pull over and you give the devil a ride, he will insist on driving. Amen. You can't let the devil be a passenger, amen, in your vehicle because before you know it, amen, he's going to be asking to drive. Uh, he'll be steering here and there. Uh, he, he, he'll deceive you uh, and, and, and he'll wreak havoc on your life. Uh, and that's why it is so important that the security of our salvation uh, must not wait until tomorrow. Today, right now, is the best time for you and I to make up our minds. It is the best time for me, uh, amen, to make a commitment with the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Christ and say, God, I'm not going to think this way anymore. I'm not going to watch that anymore. I'm not going to talk that way anymore. I'm not going to hang out with those friends anymore. I'm not going to smoke that anymore. I'm not going to be involved in immorality anymore. I'm going to walk the good life. I'm going to live the righteous way. I'm going to serve God. You got to make up your mind. You just need to make up your mind. You're going to serve God, Nolan. I can't do that. You can't force anybody. You got to make up your own mind. You got to make up your, I mean, who's the biggest guy in here? I don't know. I mean, I, I, we just lost. I saw Tom earlier. I mean, Chris is pretty good size. You know, I could, I could, that's what I could do. I could pay Chris a hundred dollars a week. This is looking good. I could pay him a hundred dollars a week and he could, I could say, Chris, I want you to grab that guy and bring him to the altar. Chris just grabbed that guy by the Isn't that crazy? No, none of that stuff is going to work. You got to realize, you got to realize what sin is in your life. You got to realize what apathy is in your life. You got to realize what a rut looks like. A rut is a coffin without sides, right? You and I got to get here. Hey, why would you know if you don't read the word? I mean, let's just say one of us get a brand new job tomorrow morning. It's Monday morning. We get a brand new job. We've never done it before. We get there, and the boss says, we are so excited. Matter of, matter of fact, you just you got to the hospital, and, and he says, we are so excited. Uh, we are so happy to have you. That's exactly right. You stand up, and Brother Dan knows. You shake the hand. You look him right in the eye. Absolutely. Absolutely. He knows. And, and all of a sudden, we say, Dan Walburn. You know, we're so ex- excited to have you here at, at, uh, um, at Theta Care. You are now the head of surgery. Woo! Man, <laughs> what would he do, right? If he was the head, he doesn't know what he's supposed to do. Brother Dan, he'd be, he'd be, going, he'd be having a perpetual break that whole day. Or maybe watching surgery. But my point is this. If you don't know, you need to get to know. Right now, obviously, before you become a surgeon, you, you got to go to I don't know how many years of college, right? How many years of internship, and, and and then you could earn that right to do something like that. But you see, how in the world can we ask anybody, uh, amen, to overcome their flesh? Uh, how can we ask anybody uh, to overcome the devil? Uh, how can we ask anybody uh, to overcome the circumstances uh, and the situations that lie ahead of us uh, if we don't tell them the only way to overcome them uh, is get to know God? Uh, is to get to know Jesus uh, and surrender yourselves to the, to, to the will of God uh, and to do the purpose of the kingdom. That's how it happens. You want to overcome lying? Get in the word and get a relationship with Jesus. You want to overcome alcohol? Get to know Jesus. Amen. You want to overcome pornography? Get a relationship with God. Get an accountability partner. It, it, it ta- you got to get serious about this stuff. Because before you know it, if you don't get serious, life gets serious. Your salvation gets serious. Today is a day of salvation. In this first chapter of Acts, we see a visibility, the literal visibility of Christ's ascending. Mentioned five times in this chapter. There's nothing figurative symbolic about it at all the ascension of jesus christ as he ascended into heaven was a personal and visible experience for his disciples and you see his return hear me his return as the angels declared will be in like manner just as jesus promised that he would destroy his temple the body right and in three days, he would raise it up again. We know, we know, us Christians know that that 
happened exactly like Jesus said it would. Right? Jesus said, I'll destroy this temple, and in three days, uh, I'll raise it up again. So, uh, amen, we can trust that Jesus uh, will return, uh, amen, exactly like uh, the Bible said that Jesus will uh, return. Uh, amen. It's not a fable. Uh, this is not something that, that, that is, it's going to happen. Uh, I'm telling the church that Jesus uh, is coming back. I'm coming to a close here. In just a few minutes. Verse 10 says, And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two angels stood by them in white apparel, and they said unto them, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? They said, This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Now, it seems obvious that the the supernatural spectacular, right? Supernatural spectacle of Jesus rising into heaven and him disappearing into the glorious clouds would leave anyone, I would, would leave any one of us standing in amazement. I mean, our mouth would be gape. We'd be like catching flies. Right? Can you just imagine it? They just lived three and a half years with him. They they have they have experience after experience. They have they have confirmation after confirmation. And and Jesus had to speak to Peter and he said, Get behind me, Satan. No. No, I, I must, I have a purpose, I have a plan. I, I must be about my father's business. I, 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 I must, uh, I, I must die. I, I must resurrect. I have a purpose. I find that the question is somewhat silly, right? Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? It may not seem obvious, but now that Jesus is gone, And because he promised, he's always kept his word. And when they're told that he's coming again, he promised to return, that he will return. The message here, notice, the message to everyone. Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Now, it doesn't seem obvious, but they had to remind they had to, the angels had to remind his disciples. You know, you can't, you cannot just stand here and gaze up into heaven the rest of your life. Here's the message to every disciple, and here's the message to every believer today. The earth, the tangible that you and I can touch and see right here. The earth, not the sky, must, the earth must be the focus. The earth, what we do down here, that's where our gaze and that is where our labors need to be focused on. Why? It was like, it was like they should have known. I'm gone. I'll come again. I'm going to go prepare a place that where you and I, where, where, where I am, you can be also. And Jesus was like, now go do what I trained you to do. Don't just stand there uh, all perplexed and, and mouth gaping open wide, even though that's what we all would do. But the, still the message was, uh, is why? Why are you standing here? Why are you just gazing up into heaven? Go do the work of the Lord. Uh, go do uh, what he's commissioned you to do. Uh, go out uh, and get involved. Uh, your focus ought to be uh, upon the world. Uh, your focus your focus has got to be on the earth. Your focus has got to get your, get your soul to heaven. Amen. While we look forward in faith towards our Lord's return, we must for now focus on our personal salvation and the labors here on this earth trying to help every man, woman, boy, and girl to experience Jesus Christ like we've experienced Jesus. Church, we have work to do. In expectation of our Savior's return, we have a world to win. We've got to first be sure that we, amen, God, I want to be ready. Today is the day of salvation. I am going to make up my mind today. 
We can waste so much time on the stuff that doesn't really matter. Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Hear me, somebody. I hope my, my message is a very simple one. Amen. It's very simple. Amen. There is work to be done in expectation that Jesus one day will come back for you. One day he's coming back for me. Amen. He's coming back for those. Amen. That he died for. He died for you. He died for me. He died for a world. Jesus is coming back. And that is a fact. But our guarantee to see him again will be because we will be focusing on our labors and being sure that our life, being sure that my life and my heart is right each and every day. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Would you stand with me this morning? Jesus is coming back. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, but not to me only, but unto all those also that love his appearing. God, one day, God, that trumpet's going to sound. And those that, those that have determined in their heart, that they're going to make heaven their home. Those that determined that they're going to be overcomers. Hey, I never said you had to be perfect. I never said, hey, the Bible says there's none righteous. No, no. Jesus said there's no one good. Uh, but, 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 but the Father, uh, oh, it, 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 your motivation matters. I believe it, it comes right down to your motivation. Where is your heart? Are you, are you doing your best to, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind? Or doesn't it matter to you? You see, it comes down to your motivation. It comes down to where my heart really is. The Bible says every... The Bible says, listen! Every knee shall bow. That's you and me. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Can I, I'll, I'm making my point at my altar call. Here it is. He said, every knee, every, everybody say every. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So the most important question for everyone today is how will you see him how, take your finger and point at your chest. How will you see him when he comes? Will you see him as a ruler and a judge? Or will you see him as your redeemer and savior? When that trumpet sounds, I want to see him as my redeemer he purchased my sins they were nailed to the cross he's my savior and i lived and over i did the best that i could and god's gonna say if you've been obedient to the gospel message the death the burial and the resurrection if you have not obeyed the gospel message in repenting of your sins and being baptized in Jesus' name by immersion. And if you've not been filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, amen. And then the Bible says, be a holy as I am holy. You've got to do your best. Come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, come on, God, I want to be ready. I open this altar. I open this altar for everyone. Amen. Jesus is coming back, and I want you to be ready.
come and and talk to him come and love on him come and be assured lay your sins at the altar lay your apathy at the altar oh god help us today jesus is coming back i can hear the sound of his coming everywhere Oh God, help us. Somebody. Oh Jesus. If you know how to intercede, you can intercede. Oh hallelujah. But to every child.